go behind the boy. Eileen Hobson lives in her own bungalow at Shepherd's Bush in London. It's a quiet cul-de-sac, but close by are the shops and cosmopolitan life of Uxbridge Road. Having a place of our own means living an independent life. I've got a beautiful bungalow, um, two bedroom because I do have carers. Um, I've got the kitchen, the living room, the bathroom, my bedroom which is a large one and a small one for the carers. I've got a small front garden which is lovely. But life hasn't always been like this. For years, a life-threatening illness kept Eileen isolated and in one hospital after another. We were prepared three or four times for her to die, but she, she just pulled through. As you can see, <laughs> I'm still alive. <laughs> Today, in a bungalow that's been adapted to Eileen's particular needs, there's space and facilities for her to choose what to do and where to go. In my bungalow, everything is at the height for a disabled person in a chair, like all the light switches are, you know, put your hand out and there's the light switch. The doors are wider than normal, so I have no problem getting inside. For both Eileen and her sister, this new independence has transformed their lives. She's got a lot of freedom in these properties. She can move around, I can visit her, whereas in other properties, you would tend, my son's disabled, he can visit her. In, in other properties, we wouldn't have been able to do. I used to feel so guilty about her having to give up a life to keep coming and visiting me, to do me shopping, washing, ironing. In a, in a way, her life stopped. For 23 years, I was going to visit her three times a week. So for her to move here, for me, I've started to do a little bit of things for myself. I've started to do courses and I've done a facial course, I'm doing a healing course, and I could never have done that before. Good boy. But it's not just the building. Equally important is the package of care Eileen receives, and that includes a special role for her dog, Sailor. Sailor is my boy. Um, he's a canine partner assistance dog. He does lots of things for me, and he's given me even more independence. You're a good boy. You've always depended on a human being, and that's demoralising. Since I got a sailor, whatever I drop, he picks up for me. If I want to go to the bathroom, he opens it for me. Eileen's journey to independence hasn't been easy. When her condition meant the long-term care of a hospital, prospects seemed bleak. You're isolated. You're isolated away from the world. You know, there is a hospital, there is the room that you have, and that is all you know. And you look through the window, and it's a sunny day, or a rainy day, or a snowy day, but you're not part of it. You've just got that one small room and you're isolated. Eileen's search for a home of her own consumed much time and energy, and there were setbacks. It can be a struggle, and it took me a long time. It took me from 1994 to 2003 to actually achieve it. It was Eileen's sister who helped to find the accommodation. I'd seen an, a little... two paragraphs in the newspaper about having take disabled properties. Being disabled doesn't mean giving up hopes of a different life. This is my castle, you know. It's mine, I go from room to room. If I want to go outside into the back garden with the dog, I go into the back garden. If I want to go on the computer to do any work, I go on the computer. It's my life, I've got charge. With the right package of support and care in a specifically adapted home, Matched by goodwill from family and friends, lives can be transformed. Absolutely fine. Need the loo? Need to take my coat off and I'll be back in a Okay. <laughs> it's absolutely wonderful that she has these carers who, who come and look after her, but I never feel that this is somebody looking after Eileen. I come to my friend's house because she's my friend and I never consider that she's um, disabled in any way. Now I've got a life.